Hello everyone and welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. Welcome back to Abyss Farms. We are back here at Goldcrest Valley and we're getting to work. We're going to get mowing. We're harvesting right now and we have our silage which is at 94%. So that will be done this episode and we'll get to actually pick that up and put it away in our silo. And that's one half of what we're going to need for our total mixed rations for our cows. So I've got to drive down here to where the harvester is. But i got to find what I did with my trailer. I think I left it down here on this field in the last episode. So I'm going to check. Yeah, I see it right there. So that's all good to go. We got the harvester running. There is my my straw that I have to take up. But I don't know if my trailer is actually on this field or not. My straw is. So I'll go ahead and finish filling this up. But I don't see my actual trailer. It might still be back up at the farm. We'll have to we'll have to look when we drop this straw off and see if that's where I left it. There's a way you can go into the map and go through all your equipment and find where you left it. And I might end up having to do that. But it's probably sitting up at the farm. Because if I remember correctly, the last episode we started this field towards the end of the episode. And I hadn't filled this straw up yet in the loading wagon. So I think I left it up top. So we're caught back up. So I'm just going to kind of head this way and pick up this straw. And then I will drop this wagon off and head up to the farm and see if my other trailer is up there that I can empty the the stuff that I'm harvesting from. I think I'm harvesting oats maybe or wheat. I don't even remember to be honest with you. But we will see. It's either barley, wheat, or oats. It's got to be one of the three because it's making straw. and pick the rest of this line up and then we will head up to the farm. Perfect. Alright. I'm going to leave this loading wagon. Well, you know what? I might, I might go ahead and take it because it's almost full anyway. It's at 92%. I'm going to leave it because if I don't, then I'm not going to be able to bring both back at the same time. So I'll leave it here and I will pick up the trailer and bring it back down and then finish filling the loading wagon and take it up. That sounds like a plan. So I'll see you when I get back down here to the field. Alright, I'm back up here at the main farm and right there is the trailer. So I'm right. I left it up here. So we're going to grab this and we're going to go ahead and take it down and empty out our harvester because I just got a notification up in the top right that the harvester is almost full. So probably by the time we get down there it'll be just about ready to be emptied out. So I'm going to take this shortcut that I take damn near every time I leave my farm. I just drive over this little hill cliff like area and it's a little sketchy because there's two bumps here and sometimes you flip but usually you're okay whoa and I flipped okay this is good though because now you can see what happens you have to kinda move back and forth and move your wheels and try to get it to 
to turn over. It's hard to do when you have a trailer behind you if you have a light tractor. So what I do is I let go of it and I flip back on my wheels just like that very easily. And then you kind of got to drive into it and try to flip your trailer back over. The best way to do that is usually by hitting the hitch on the front. You can kind of try to get that thing flipped. I'm trying to get it in a better position to where I can use the hill. I might be able to just ram right into it and pop it back over. Now, that didn't work too well. It's in a pretty good spot. So I'm going to try to use this front hitch if I can. Well, I missed it. Okay. It's alright, because we're about, about to flip it back over using the hill. This is one of those things where it's like... There we go. Oh, I almost had it. If you use the shortcut, you can save a lot of time. Because you don't have to drive all the way back down to the road and go down and then come back up the road. You can just go straight off and save a lot of time. But every once in a while, this happens. And you flip your trailer and your tractor over, and it's damn near impossible. Oh, I got it now. I got it now. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There you go. It's damn near impossible to get it turned the right way again while it's connected to your tractor. So, really, your only option is to disconnect your trailer from your tractor and push it around and flip it back over, then reconnect. Now, also, you can leave it all connected and bring your skid steer loader down or your wheel loader or your telehandler or front end loader, whatever like that that you have. You can bring that down and use that to pick up your tractor and your trailer and flip you back over on your wheels. If I am somewhere where I have that machinery very, very close, a lot of times I'll do that. But even though my skid steer loader was right up at the top of the hill at my farm, I would have had to drive it all the way around because I couldn't risk going down that hill again with the skid steer loader and flipping it because then I'd really be up a creek. So it's fairly easy to get everything turned back the right way if you disconnect your trailer. But if you play this game for any length of time, you are going to get very tired of driving the long way around and you're going to find little shortcuts like that that you can get away with most of the time. Every once in a while you're going to flip, and when that happens enough, you're going to figure out very quickly how to get everything turned back over so that you can go again. The nice thing is it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to the vehicle. I mean, my maintenance level, if you look on the bottom right of the screen where the speedometer is, see that little wrench above it? That's now at halfway. I have done damage to my vehicle by flipping it over. So I'm going to need to repair that for it to work the way it's supposed to work. It won't work quite as well now because it's damaged. But you can take it right over to the shop and repair it. The same place where I sold the equipment and where I changed the color of the equipment in the beginning of the episode, or the beginning of the series rather, that is where you take your stuff to repair it. You can also put a workshop on the farm, and I might end up doing that at some point. But it's not the end of the world right now. I'm not even going to worry about it yet. Because I still have about half of my maintenance full. So I'm still kind of good to go. But those are the risks you take. Now, when you repair it, it's not extremely expensive. You like, if I take it in right now, it's going to be less than a grand, probably, to fix it all back up. So in the grand scheme of things, it's not expensive. It's not something that's going to make you be like, oh, I'm not doing that. Because you're, you're talking even $1,000. You're talking nothing compared to what you're making. I mean, I have 242 grand right now. So I can definitely afford $1,000 to fix a tractor because I rolled it down the hill like a dummy. 
Alright, so I'm going to take this straw back up to the farm and drop it off, and I will catch back up with you when I get back down here. Alright, I left the loading wagon and the tractor up at the farm because I got a notification that this guy was done with this field. Now, when you have this field, he never actually finishes completely. The last little line here, he only does about a quarter of it, and that's because it's not actually part of the field. It's kind of the outside of the field, but I would go ahead and finish this line up every time anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and mow this, and then I need to go up and grab the wind rower and wind row it so I can pick it up. Unless I want to go ahead and turn this into hay, which is a possibility. Because my silage is almost done, and I need hay also to make my total mix rations. And all I need to do to make it into hay is to run over it with a tether. But I don't think I have a tether yet. I don't think I bought one yet. So I would have to actually go to the shop and buy a tether and pick one up and bring it back here if I'm going to make this into hay. Or I could just pick up the wind rower that's already here and go ahead and wind row this up to make more silage. That might be the play. That way I get a little bit more silage going before I start making the hay. Because the silage takes a while to ferment, and the hay is pretty much instant. So I'm going to go ahead and windrow all this, and when I pick it up, I'll take it up and put it in the silage bunkers here. This is what the silage looks like once it's done. Now I'm going to show you a trick to picking this up, but first I need to get all of this white covering gone. So this is how you do that. You kind of go up to where it is, to where the beginning of it is, and you put your scoop down, and you run over it. And if you get it just right, it will disappear. There we go. So you got to actually pick up some silage in your bucket to do this. So what I do is I just pick it up and then I move forward and dump it again. And then I'll put the thing back down and I will do the same thing again. And you just keep doing that until you get to the end of this. This will open up your entire bunker silo so that you can pick up all of it at once with your loading wagon instead of having to do it by the bucket load with your skid steer loader or wheel loader or whatever you happen to have that has a bucket on it. The way I'm going to show you, you can pick it up much quicker and much easier. Now I also need to pick up this shaft here that did not ferment because it wasn't covered. I need to go ahead and pick that up as well and get it out of the way. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take it over and dump it in this other silo because it's going to be able to ferment and be made into silage. So we'll go ahead and sit it over in here. Alright, so that's done. So now we have our tractor here with our loading wagon. So what you're going to do, it's the same thing you do when you pick up the straw. You're going to do that to the silage. The trick is you have to go very slow and give it time to pick it up. A lot of people don't know that you can do this. A lot of people think you have to use a bucket or a conveyor belt to do this. But you can actually pick it up with your loading wagon. As you can see, I'm going very slowly, and I'm giving it time 
to pick it all up. The more silage you have in your silo, in your bunker here, the slower you have to go. If you've done multiple layers and you're dealing with five, six, seven hundred thousand liters of silage, you're going to need to go real slow because your loading wagon has to pick it all up before it can move forward. And if you try to zip through it and pick it all up quickly, it's not going to pick it up. But as you can see, if you take your time and you're careful and slow, see I went a little bit too fast and it didn't pick it up. And now I'm full. If you take your time and you go slow with it, you can pick it up with your loading wagon. Now my loading wagon only holds 34,000 liters, so I have to make multiple passes to pick it all up. But if you have a larger loading wagon, obviously you'll make less passes. So all you're going to do is just bring it over here and dump it right into your silo, and then you can get it out whenever you need it to make your total mix rations or to feed it to your cows this way or if you want to sell it or whatever you want to do with it. If you want to sell it, you can take it directly to your sell anything point and just go ahead and sell it by the trailer load. So now we're just going to repeat that process again. Looks like our, some of our soybeans are getting done. That's good. So we'll be able to harvest them in maybe an episode or two, depending on how long it takes us with the fields we bought. Now we're just going to repeat the exact process we just did. And we're going to pick up another trailer load. Looks like one of our helpers finished their, pat, their task. It was probably the guy that is wind rowing. Because our harvester still had a whole lot to do. So my money's on the wind rower guy got done. So that's good. We'll be able to pick that up. So now we've got silage we're trying to pick up with our loading wagon. We've got straw that we still need to pick up with the loading wagon, and we've got grass on the field that we need to pick up with the loading wagon. So we are going to be busy running back and forth doing a lot of different jobs with our loading wagon. Now we could also take our baler down and make more grass bales if we wanted to, or make straw bales if we wanted to. But I would rather have the stuff loose in my silo because it's easier to deal with. And you have a bale limit. And I want to save my bales for making straw bales later when I can do the pellets. So right now I'm just doing everything I can loose because I have this nice beautiful big silo that can hold it all. When I reach the point where it's full in my silo, where I can't put any more in, then I will simply sell it at that point. Because that will mean that I have almost a million liters in the silo already. And that's plenty. I won't need any more than that for a long time. That's enough to run me for a good amount of time. No matter what it is. So then we can just turn around and sell all this stuff and make even more money. So after this load, we should only have one more load to do of the silage and this bunker will be empty and we will be able to fill it back up again if we choose. Now after I harvest these soybeans on this main field here, I'm going to replant this with grass so that we'll have a very large supply of grass that we can cut and we will be able to make plenty of hay and silage to make total mixed rations for our cows when we get them. And also, we will be able to make a ton of extra silage to sell because silage will get you some good money so 
we have one more load of silage to pick up, but it's not even going to be close to a full loading wagon, so probably I will hold off on that and go ahead and go pick up either straw or grass, one of the two. We'll see what the straw looks like as, as we drive by, and if I'm too far behind, I'll stop and do a load of that. But if I'm not too far behind yet, I will go pick up a load of grass instead. So we'll see which one needs the attention more. And I'll see you when I decide which one I'm going to do. Yeah, as I was driving by, I could see that there's quite a bit of straw on the ground here to pick up. So I will definitely have enough for a full load. So I'm going to go ahead and and fill up a full load of this and take it back up to the farm. The thing I was concerned about is there not being enough for a full load of straw and then I pick up a partial load and then I just have to wait until there's enough to fill up the wagon if I want to take it back up to the farm with a full wagon. Because otherwise I have to take a partial wagon up to the farm and make extra trips because I won't be able to put grass in it because I'll have straw in it. That was my concern. But I can see here that there's tons of straw to pick up. So I'll definitely be able to fill this wagon up and get another load of straw off the ground here so that we can resell this field once it's finished. And move on to the next one. As we work our way through all these fields that we bought, I will make my way back up to the main farm with the harvester, and I will go ahead and harvest those soybeans. That way I can get grass planted up there. And the soybeans will be pretty good money. We got a pretty big batch of soybeans that are gonna be ready. And soybeans are the best paying crop on Farming Simulator right now. They're worth more than anything else. So it's always a good bet to plant soybeans if you're trying to make some cash. Now the prices fluctuate. If you sell nothing but soybeans for a long enough time, the price will drop down. But even at a lower price, soybeans are worth it because you make good money. But you can definitely alternate go soybeans once or twice and then you can go canola once or twice because canola sells for a good amount of money too and you can kind of go back and forth if you do a couple fields of canola by the time you're done with all that and harvested it and sold it soybean prices will be back up again so then you can switch back to soybeans for a couple fields and then once you get those done canola prices will be back up so you can kind of go back and forth between the two if you want and still be making pretty good money per thousand liters. To me, the sweet spot is anything over a thousand dollars per thousand liters. Because with that, you're making really good money. If you think that your trailer can hold 30 some thousand liters, if what you're selling is worth at least a grand per thousand liters, then a full load is going to be 30 some thousand dollars. And if you have a big enough field and you're making multiple trips, you can very quickly build it up to over 100,000 or more if it's a big field. You're not going to make that usually off of wheat or barley. You're just not. It's going to have to be soybeans or canola because usually wheat and barley sell for a lot less. And straw and grass sell for way less. So you're going to want to use your grass, you're going to want to use your straw as much as possible and only sell it when you are just completely full and you can't hold anymore. Now if you make your 
straw into pellets, it sells for a lot more money. You can also make pellets out of hay. So if you get to the point where you have tons of grass, you can always make hay out of that grass and then make pellets out of that hay and make a lot of money there too. And I think by this point they have done an update to that mod to where there's a difference in price now between the loose pellets and when you actually buy the little factory and make pallets of pellets. I think you make more with that. So that might be something I do in the future as well. Because I kind of dug the factory. It was kind of cool. But there was no difference in price, so it was a hell of a lot of extra work for no more money. But I think that they have corrected that now. So I'm going to head back up and drop this straw off, and then I think I'm going to head over to pick up a load of grass maybe after that. So I'll see you when I get there. Alright, I am back down here on the field that I am harvesting because when I got up to the farm there was a notification that said that my harvester was full. So I need to empty him out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that he can continue working. And I might even have enough here for another load of straw before I start working on the grass. Because I want to clear this field off of all the straw around the same time that he is finished harvesting. That way I can go ahead and sell the field back and get that initial investment back so that I can use it somewhere else. So we'll head up here and go ahead and do another load of straw. That should bring me really close to where the harvester is by the time it's finished. And of course he's going to be continuing to work. So hopefully by the end of this episode this field will be finished and we can sell it back and get our money back for it. That will be wonderful. And here soon, once I get these fields done, we're also going to start working on some different contracts because that's a really good way to make cash as well. What a contract is, is one of the other farmers on the game will put out a contract for work that needs to be done on their field. So if their field needs fertilized, for example, they will say, all right, here's a contract for fertilizing my field. I'll pay you five grand if you fertilize it for me. So then you accept the contract and you go and fertilize that field for them and they give you five grand. There's contracts for fertilizing, for cultivating, for seeding, for harvesting, and for bailing. And there's also transportation contracts where you just pick something up and take it somewhere for them. But they don't pay much at all. The best contracts do just purely money-wise I think are the fertilizing contracts. They don't pay the most but they pay alright and they're extremely fast to do. So you can do a lot of them back to back. The harvesting contracts are nice once you get pigs because there will be crop left over once you reach the quota for what the guy wants for his field. And then whatever is left over, you keep. So you can either sell it and make a little bit extra money and usually it's about the same amount of money you're going to make off the contract is how much dollars worth of extra crop you have. 
so you can kind of double your money for the contract or you can keep that crop and go ahead and feed it to your pigs so you're getting free food for your pigs and you're being paid to harvest it and feed your pigs basically that's another neat way that you can save a little bit of cash and feed your animals and the beauty of it is you're actually getting paid to do it which is awesome All right, I gotta get this thing out of the way but I got all the way back up to where my harvester was initially at and I still have more to fill I don't think we'll actually catch up to the harvester before we get this loading wagon full, but it will be close. Because we're only at 65% on the wagon right now. So we might actually catch up to him. Which is a great thing, because that means that the majority of the straw will be off this field. It won't take very long to finish it up so that we can sell it back to the bank and get all of our money back plus whatever we make off the crop we sell now this is another way that you can get free food for your pigs is by buying a field that has a crop in it that you need to feed them and harvesting it and feeding it to them and either selling the excess or storing the excess in your silo to feed them in the future and then you sell the field back and you get exactly what you paid for it in the first place so the only money you're actually out is the amount of money that you spent on workers and fuel and that's it so essentially you are feeding your pigs for free and that makes raising pigs more worth it because you don't make a ton of money off pigs the great thing about pigs is they reproduce so quickly so you can sell them a lot it, very often but the problem is it is so expensive to feed them because either you have to grow all the crops yourself and feed them to your pigs which means that you're not selling those crops and you're not making any money off of them. So it's expensive that way. Or you grow your crops and sell your crops and then you buy pig food or you buy the individual components of pig food and feed your pigs, which runs into a good amount of money. You're still gonna come out on top if you sell the crops and then buy other food for the pigs if you buy the individual things. So if you buy like wheat and corn and potatoes and all that, you will do better by selling your crops and buying from the Buy Anything mod. Now if you buy just the pig food itself as a product, that is incredibly expensive and you will lose a lot of money. So it's all in how you want to do it. But I'm going to drop this straw back off and then make my way back down so I'll see you then all right I am here with the grass I'm gonna go ahead and do a load of that I do not have enough straw on the field where I'm harvesting to fill my loading wagon so I'm gonna go ahead and let that harvester finish up and I'm gonna do a load or two of grass in the meantime and try to get most of this grass off this field while I'm waiting for the harvester to finish I'm at least going to do the one trip of grass and then we'll see where the harvester is. If he's close to finish, I might go ahead and pick up the rest of the straw. That way I can go ahead and get that field sold and finished up. But if he still has a way to go, we'll come and grab another load of grass. So we're going to be making more silage and we're also going to be making hay. So the grass will come in handy.
I don't know whether I will actually empty this grass into the bunker silo yet, or I might just put it into my regular silo because I can always get it back out and do silage if I want to. But that way if I decide I want to make it into hay, then I still have grass instead of silage. Because I do have one round of silage in the silo already. So if I go ahead and get some hay going in the near future, I can go ahead and start making total mix rations and getting that stored away in the silo. Because I want to have all that together before I buy the cows. That way I can actually feed them and get them producing milk fairly quickly. I'm also going to buy pigs very soon, but first I need to sell more crops to make more money because I don't even have enough money for the pig pen yet. Because I think the large pig pen, if I'm not mistaken, is $250,000 and I only have $240,000 right now. So I still need another 10 grand before I can even afford it. And 10 grand only gets me the pen itself. And then I'm completely broke again. That doesn't even pay for any pigs. So I'm definitely going to need to sell some more crops before I can get pigs or cows going. Cows are the most expensive thing to do, so I'm going to have to save up. But we're going to take this grass up to the farm, and then we'll check on our harvester and see where he's at. I am back down here with my harvester. I'm going to go ahead and get this straw picked up, because my harvester is almost done with this field. So if I get the rest of this straw picked up, I will be able to sell this thing back and get a good amount of money back that I spent on it in the first place. And once I do that, I will have enough to either buy the pig pen or to buy the cow pen, one of the two. I'll probably do the pigs first and then do the cows last because they are the most expensive. And that'll give me a lot more time to get the total mix rations going and be more prepared for it. Pigs and cows both are going to use a lot of straw. So I'm definitely going to be picking up straw every chance I get so that I have a really good supply of it. Because that is something that they constantly need. They use it as bedding and it mixes with their poo and becomes manure, which I can then use to fertilize fields or to sell. Either way I want to do it. You don't make a ton of money off manure. It's better to use it as a fertilizer and use your slurry as a fertilizer but you can sell it if you want. You can also use it in greenhouses and stuff like that. There's multiple mods in this game where you can grow tomatoes and lettuce and things like that in greenhouses that you set up on your property. And the greenhouse has a tank where you put water that waters the plants and then it has a, a little uh, box that you fill up with manure that goes onto the plants as well. So that's another use for your manure. And then you make so much per hour that your greenhouse has water and manure in it. But it's not a lot of money, to be honest with you. So from a financial standpoint, it you would probably do better just using it as a fertilizer because you'll get more crops. But from a role-playing standpoint, it's kind of fun. 
and it gives you a purpose for all that manure that that's going to be building up in your cow and your pig pens kind of gives you something to do with it other than just use it as fertilizer so as always with everything in this game it's really up to you it's how you want to play it what you want to do that's the beauty of this game is you can take it in so many different directions and you can literally do just about anything you want you can build your farm however you want to build it if you want to be simply a corn farmer that's all you want to grow is corn you can do that if you want to just grow potatoes you can do that if you want to have a cotton farm that only grows cotton then you can do that on this game or if you don't want to grow any crops at all and you just want to raise animals you can do that you can even just be a horse trainer and bring horses in and train them into race horses and make money doing that and never have to do any actual farming it's really all up to you you can even set this game up and be a truck driver to where you buy a semi truck and a trailer and you simply fill it up from a buy anything mod or by buying pallets of different things and then take it to the sell point that is paying the most for it and make a profit off the load so you could even set yourself up on this game and never farm at all simply as a truck driver who delivers full truckloads from one place to another and makes a profit off of it really the sky's the limit you can do anything you want that's what makes this game so special and so fun is you're building your own empire your own farm and it's all about that business and it really it really has a challenge to it you know the challenge is trying to build a successful business on the game you have a lot of expenses you have equipment that is extremely expensive and you just have to figure out a way to make a profit I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy out of the way okay now we'll go back here to our harvester and we will pull him around and go ahead and get him emptying into this trailer and the answer to what I was growing on this field is oats. I was right the first time. I have oats on this field, and I also have oats on another field up by that other cell point, by where we're cutting our grass. I have a field up there of oats as well that I need to harvest. But this field is almost finished. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the rest of this up. And then I will run this back up to the farm. And that will be probably the end of the episode. Because right now I'm around 57 minutes, something like that. So there's only a couple minutes left before the recording will be finished. So I'm going to go ahead and run this up to the farm and empty it and everything. Let me go ahead and sell this field back now that I'm done. So I just made $64,000 back. That's beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and run this up to the farm and empty it. And that will be the end of the episode. So thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And just thank you for watching. And until I speak to you again, love many, trust few, and do harm to none. God loves you. And so do I. I'm going to drop this harvester up there at the other field. And I'll see you on the next gameplay. Bye-bye.